Hi everyone, Jonathan here at Cheshire Gun Room. Today I'm going to talk to you about rifle scopes, I'll explain a little bit about rifle scopes, the, the numbers that are on them, uh, what the numbers mean and why you would choose a particular rifle scope for a particular application, whether it be for an air rifle, rim fire, sensor fire, target or hunting. So the smallest scope that uh, we'd ever come across usually in our stores are something like this is a pencil scope. We don't sell many of them. Um, you get them on some entry level kits. They usually fix power, so it means you can't zoom them in. Um, they're quite restricted and limited. They're, they're okay for maybe 15 yard shooting, but we do, it's not something we would really push that much because it's, it's, like I say, it is quite limited really. You don't get much light in them. Um, our entry level that we'd usually promote would be something like this. This is again a fixed power. Um, so that, sorry, was a, a 4x20. This is a 4x40. So um, that's probably the the smallest we would really recommend. Uh, sometimes people like the, the real thin pencil scopes for their application, but we, we sell very, well, we very rarely sell them these days. So this is a, a 4x20 fixed power scope. Um, it's ideal for like an entry-level spring rifle, perfect for close-range target or vermin control. The numbers, the 4x40, basically mean it's a four times magnification. So when you look through this telescopic site, your target or your, the, the object you're looking at would potentially look four times bigger or four times closer. So it gives you a four times zoom, a four times magnification. The x40 is the diameter of the objective lens. So it's a 40 millimeter diameter lens um, so that's a fixed power like I say entry level up from that you would be looking at a variable power so but popular for us would be the next one it would be like a 3 to 9 by 40 or a 3 to 9 by 50 um, after the 3 to 9s they jump to 3 to 12s or 4 to 12 so this one in my hand at the minute is a, a 4 to 12 by 50 the, the added number, the 212 or 29 from the 4, basically means it's a variable power scope so you can zoom in. So your, your, your entry level uh, power on this one is your, is your 4 magnification. But as you increase this wheel here, you rotate it to the left, um, and that increases your magnification all the way up to 12 times. So you can basically bring your target 12 times close or 12 times bigger or you, you can you might set it on six seven eight you can set it on whatever suits you for the distance you're shooting at because if it's if it's not your target's not too far away you, you might only want on a medium size magnification so this is a by 50 so on this one the objective lens is 50 millimeter diameter um, both of these scopes i've just shown you are a one inch which is a 25 millimeter tube size so you get several different size of, of uh, rifle scope tubes. You get one inch known as 25 mil. You get a 30 millimeter, which would be something like this one. Um, you get a 34 mil, which I've not got an example to hand, but also that one is a recently come on the market. That's a, the new Swarovski DS. And that's a 40 millimeter. So you can see the, the size of that is quite a, a chunky rifle scope. Um, so 4x40, you get your 3 to 9 by 40 so you get 44s, 50s. We find 40mm and 50mm objective are the most popular. You do get 56mm as well. Um, I think that DS was a, a 56. Um, with a rifle scope, typically, the bigger the objective lens and the bigger the tube, the more light you can get in. The way someone explained it to me many years ago was, um, imagine like a funnel with water. The bigger the funnel, the more water or more liquid you could get through the funnel. Same principle with a rifle scope. The bigger the objective lens, the bigger the tube, the more light can get in quickly. And it's light that gives us a clear image and a sharp image. Um, you, there's many lenses inside a rifle scope and they have chemical coatings to uh, purify them and sharpen the, the glass up um, to, to give us a nice clear image. So um, rifle scopes can be quite heavy with no lens in, actually very lightweight. They're only aluminium tubes usually, but it's the glass in there that gives it quite a bit of weight. A few other features on telescopic rifle scopes like this one are things like adjustable eye relief. This allows you to adjust the eye relief to focus with your eyesight. If ever you've looked for a telescopic scope like this and um, you, you've looked at the crosshair, put your crosshair on your target and then your crosshair becomes a little bit fuzzy, a little bit blurred, but it's basically usually because your eye relief's not focused correctly for your eye. All you have to do is turn this, uh, unscrew this outwards away from the scope and that'll basically uh, space the, the lenses slightly differently and it'll allow you to focus your eyesight to the, the crosshair inside. Um, the easiest way to do this is look through, start backing it out. When you get the scope, 
nice and sharp, you can lock it there. There's usually a, a locking ring on them and you can you can nip that in place. If you go too far, it's a bit fuzzy, just wind it back in a little bit and you'll set it up. Often out of the box, you don't need to do much with these. Um, what I've found over the years, setting up rifle scopes for customers, the older people get, the, the probably the, the more their eyesight deteriorates slightly, and this needs some, some adjustment. If people have very thick lens in their glasses, usually this might need to come out a little bit more. Um, this particular scope I'm holding is parallax adjustable, and it's an AO, which means adjustable objective. So the front part of the scope, the objective lens end, can be adjusted. So on here, the minimum setting is 15 yards, and you can increase that round. There's increments on here, 25, 50, 75, and so on, up to infinity. So if you're shooting, if you're, uh, your target's, say, 40 yards away, you could put that on approximately 40 yards. And the idea is you're setting up the scope with the, the ideal um, parallax setting for a 40 yard shot. If you're shooting quite close up 10 or 15 yards, you would drop down to as, as low as you can go in this case. Um, people sometimes say they can use it for range finding. I've never really done that. But the idea being is when you, you look at an object and you adjust the parallax on your scope, when you get the clearest, sharpest, sharpest image, you look at what number you're on and that tells you the range. The principle is that the, the lens has focused uh, on the target correctly and then you can work it out, but I don't find that to be that accurate myself. Um, other um, parallax adjustable scopes are ones like this. So this is a side parallax. So you might see phrases such as side parallax or uh, side wheel. And basically the parallax, instead of being in the objective lens, is at the side here. So you can adjust the this turret here to allow you to focus your lenses. This is quite nice if you're range shooting and you don't want to be stretching around to adjust the scope like that. You can adjust it at the, at the side here. Um, other features are illuminated reticule, and so that's where your crosshair can uh, light up. So usually crosshair is typically etched black, but then you can uh, put a little bit of light on it, usually red, green, sometimes blue and orange. Um, different brightness settings, so on a very bright day, you might need a high um, brightness setting so that the crosshair stands out. If it's low light or, or quite overcast woodland uh, or quite a dull day, a, a low brightness one one or two uh, brightness setting would be adequate enough for you to see your, your crosshair. That can be quite useful if you're shooting, say you're vermin shooting in woodland and it's uh, quite overcast or dark. It, it's by no means night vision, but what it just does, it allows you to see that crosshair easily on your target. Uh, often you'll probably look through your, your scope and see your crosshair and then all of a sudden you, you'll struggle to place your crosshair on your target because everything's dark in the background it's hard to pick out the crosshair and to, to have a nice accurate shot we, it's nice to be able to see exactly where your crosshair is pointing um a nice feature on a scope like this is you can actually um zero your scope so imagine we'd set this up now um on an air rifle or rimfire whatever it may be zero your scope and let's say Let's say it's um, a 17 HMR and you've zeroed for 100 yards. Um, what you can do is you, you, you've done your zero in and now we're, we're at uh, 1.4 on the top turret there. You can undo this top cap. Now, not every scope has this feature, so be careful before you start undoing um, turret caps. But you can basically undo the locking screw on top and it allows this top cap to, to spin freely and that there is not actually making adjustment to the um, turret and what you can basically do is set this back to say zero and then lock it down and what we've now done is your rifle scope is zero to 100 yards and the top turret is also set on number zero so then you can re-zero your scope to say 150 yards so you would lift up your turret you'd make your adjustments zero your rifle in and you're at 150 and let's just say it's 1.8 on the um turret cap you can set your rifle up now and you can swing it around to zero that's your 100 yard you, you should be absolutely bang on zero 100 yards and then your 150 you go to 1.8 and you, you, you're right on target. So it takes away the um, the judgment and the error for aiming over and under and so on. So that, that's quite a nice feature um, for, for people who use it on hunting or, or for target. Um, a lot of scopes come with scope lens covers. So that's the simple bikini cap. Uh, some are the aluminium ones, like they're like an aluminium flip up. I'm oh, sorry, no, they're a plastic one. They're a plastic uh, on that MTC one there. And they come supplied with that. That one there 
is an aluminium. These are quite nice, they're quite good quality them. Some people are not keen on them because they, they make quite a bit, bit of noise when you open and close them for hunting purposes. It can be a bit, bit too noisy. Um, I like the ones like this, traditional plastic flip up, which has like a Butler Creek style. Um, they're quite inexpensive. They do break because they, they, they catch on clothes when you're out, if you're out hunting with them and stuff like that. But they protect the lens as well. Sometimes some scopes come with sunshades and these just basically help to keep excess sunlight out on a bright day. So this particular one here, that's a hawk scope that comes with a sunshade. Um, depending on what type of shooting you're doing, it could be useful for you to take, take the glare out. 99% of rifle scopes uh, are, are threaded at the end, so the, the lens will be threaded, and we get asked often, do you have a sunshade for, for my scope? Not every scope's intended to have a sunshade. Um, often these threaded rings are actually the way the scope's manufactured and assembled, so the lenses and the locking rings are actually wound into it, so it might be threaded, but doesn't necessarily mean there'll be a, a sunshade available for it. Um, so we, we've touched on the size of scope, tubes and, and so on. So you've got, like I said earlier, you've got the one inch, 30 mil, 34 and 40. Uh, the 40 mil, and that's for us, that's a specialist mount. Um, most air rifles would, would use something like this. That's a, uh, uh, these are a two piece ring um, and they're a one inch, that's a high. Um, you do also get, a one piece mount. So that there you two piece, that's a one piece. Um, these are quite good for air rifles and rim fires, pre-charge rifles, especially because they'll avoid the magazine, because sometimes the magazine protrudes quite high on the on the top of the rifle. On certain spring rifles, if it's quite heavy recoil, then you may wish to go for a one piece mount because it gives you a little bit more um clamping surface area. Um, usually two pieces are good enough, but some people prefer to go for, for the one piece. You get aluminium and steel rings. Um, most of the air rifles and rim fires are usually an aluminium ring is good enough. Uh, sometimes on the center fire, we're looking at more steel. Um, these are a quick detachable, so they can be quite useful if you need to swap between a day and a night scope. Um, you can quickly swing them, lock, unlock them. That's a, a weaver style mount. With these, you're, they're what we call a dovetail rail, nine to 11. So that's majority of air rifles and rim fires. Uh, we find in these days a lot more um, air rifles are being manufactured with the, the Weaver or Picatinny style rail. And that's the one where the, the bar goes through the bottom. So like this quick detachable one, or I've got a worn one here. And there's, a, there's an aluminum recoil bar that goes in there and that helps to prevent the ring from slipping backwards. Um, some of the center fires, Seikos and Tickers, um, Remingtons, etc., they have to have a two part system. So you have a base and a mount, so, or base and a ring. So there's a steel base there that would, you'd have to get the right one to suit your rifle, and then you'd pair that up with the correct type of scope ring. So we would put these together. That's your base, that's your ring, a little bit of thread lock between. The, the idea with the thread lock, it just helps to prevent the screw from loosening. You don't ever want to over tighten or put too much adhesive in there. The idea is it just stops the, the screw from coming loose. Um, and if you need to remove it, you can with a decent um, Allen key torque wrench, you can usually release it quite easily. Um, the nice thing with a set like this is you can get the exact size spacing that you require. You always want to try and get the scope as close to the barrel as you possibly can. It just helps with zero in and the, the, the gap above the scope and the, the barrel and the, the angle in which your, your projectile will, will fly. The, the, the closer you can have the, the scope to the uh, barrel, the, the smaller angle will, will be the trajectory for zero in. Um, with air rifle and rimfire rings, usually we'll use stuff like uh, a good quality Allen key to, to lock them up. Some, sometimes they, they require a screwdriver. If, you, if you're doing quite a lot with your air rifles or your rifles, uh, a, a mini gunsmithing kit like this, a decent sort of quarter hex screwdriver and a, a changeable bits to make sure you've got the right, right tool for the task is ideal. Um, on center fires, Sometimes, depending on what the caliber is, the type of ring and base and screw, etc., um, it might be necessary to torque the, the screw up to a particular setting. So we'd use something like this, which is an adjustable torque wrench or torque meter, and you can set that. It could be anything between uh, 20 foot-pounds of uh, pressure or, uh, sorry, inch-pound of pressure, or, or 40 inch-pounds. So um, you, sometimes your mounts will come with instructions to what setting they need. Um, like I say, it's mostly on the center fires and, and bigger, heavier calibers, heavier recoil or something like that. Um, occasionally, scope mounts will have a 
a, a nut on the side here and we'd try and make sure we match up the correct size spanner for that nut. I'd never use an adjustable because it's easy obviously for them to slip around but if you get the right size of spanner you, you shouldn't go wrong. Um, occasionally you might you might need a hammer but if there's a, a recoil pin sometimes so on this one here um, there's a little recoil stud and that's because in the back of air rifles often there's some holes machined out and that allows for a pin a little recoil to, to slot into a hole so that with recoil the scope mount can't slide back on the rail um, occasionally they're like a, a roll pin and you might just need to drift it with a, a small hammer and a punch uh, sometimes it's a screw so in this case it's actually a little mini, mini allen screw um, you might need to take it out or wind it in a small amount uh, you get like I said, one piece, two piece rings, um, you get single and double screw. So that is what we'd refer to as a two piece double screw because you've got double screw on the side and you've got double screws on top for, for clamping. Um, sometimes with night visions and different types of rails, you might need to raise the rail. So something like that, that's a, a Weaver or a Picatinny razor, ideal for certain night vision applications. And these can be quite useful, little um, bubble level that allows you to mount on top of your scope ring so that you can tell if you're canting the, the rifle or not. You'll have heard the phrase reticule and crosshair. That's basically what you, you look at when you put up your, you, you aim your scope on your target. Um, if you imagine, there's your scope you're looking through. A normal crosshair, a, a traditional crosshair will be something like that. Um, that's a, a box standard straight crosser, um, a very traditional style of reticle, also known as a, a 30 30 or a duplex. Sometimes they have a thicker post at the bottom and the sides, like this. And that is sort of known as used like a traditional sort of German number four or a 4A style reticule. Um, you get first focal and second focal plane optics as well. And what that basically means is it's to do with the positioning of where the crosshair is within the scope and when you zoom in sometimes the crosshair will on the second focal um as you zoom your rifle scope in the crosshair will get bigger as well it's like zooming in the crosshair as well some people prefer that because they like the crosshair to get slightly larger another popular crosshair we see a lot these days is mill dot and more recently even a half mill dot and what that basically is is a series of dots placed on your crosshair and these are used for shooting underneath and above your zeroing point. So, sorry about the drawing, but let's say that was um, an air rifle scope we've just zeroed at 35 yards at the center there. A 40 yard shot may work out like this dot here, or if it's a half mil dot, there's some more increments in there. Um, a 40 yard shot might be on this one, and then a 45, four, or 48 maybe, 50, 60 yard dot. A 20 yard shot might be this one, or a 15 yard shot could be this one. Um, so. When you get to you, used to your rifle scope and you cross out the way you set it up in the, the trajectory, the ballistics on your, your air rifle or rifle, you, you can get quite accurate and consistent with you, knowing your reticle and knowing your rifle so that you can judge the distance on a particular target and use the exact correct marker on the, the crosser to, to get a really accurate shot. The, the marks and increments on the side horizontally are usually used for windage. So people will use these and they can measure the, the wind speed and on, depend on how, how windy it is. Sometimes on rifle scopes, there might be a range finding device and often you'll see something with slightly different spaced in, uh, markers on the side and the idea is it depends on the the scope and there's a lot of software out there these days in apps and so on but the idea is basically if you can place um, an object say the size of a rabbit or the size of a fox between these two marks here it will be determined dis um, distance depending on which which gap it fits in so that could be that it's uh, 100 yards away and then if it fits in this one here it might be 50 if it fits in that one it might be 25 so the these can help people judge the distance and then know which marker to, to link it up and take the shot so that's a quick overview of uh, basic rifle scopes scope mounts there's hundreds of options of rifle scopes and many many options of rings and basic scope mounts so um typically air gun shooting 3 to 9 by 40s 312 40s 416 50s they're, they're popular um on some of the bigger pre-charge that people do a lot 
sort of long distance target shooter. They might want a, a 6 to 24 or um, uh, 832. Some, some, some big scopes out there, really. Uh, rim fire shooting, a lot of the time people are happy with. 3 to 9s, 4 to 12s, center fire. Sometimes people prefer just a, a traditional fixed power. So that's the Swarovski Habish, that's a 6 by 42 Typical scope for sort of woodland stalking, perfect for 100, 150 yard shot. Obviously you can still shoot out to 200 yards of it, but often we find these days people really like the magnification. I mean, I, I do like having this magnification on the scopes because it allows you to zoom in when you zero in or if you've got the opportunity to take time for your, your shot placement. If you can zoom in and you, you can really see what you're what you're shooting at so i hope that explains a little bit about rifle scopes for you it was only a, a brief overview um if you've got a question about a particular rifle scope or what rifle scope would suit your style of shooting type of rifle you've got a rare rifle feel free to give us a call uh pop in store send us an email whatever you you, you would like and um, if we can help you advise you we will do so many thanks for watching